Hey YouTube, it's Dimitri, and today we're going to answer a subscriber's question on Americans, a diversity, and quant finance here. Uh, the question is just specifically hitting on, there's three separate questions here, but it's just really getting into the facts of why do programs want more diversity, and specifically why have programs been mentioning they want more Americans? So what's going on here? The question though from the subscriber is they're currently at an MFE program who recently got a new director. They had the opportunity to sit in on two thirds of the potential directors. It was really interesting to see how uh, they all wanted to increase the diversity of the MFE program, which you touched upon in previous videos. Um, they have three specific questions here. There are a lot of details. I'm not gonna cover every possible detail because if I had someone sitting with me and we had this, this discussion here, uh, this could be like a three or four hour discussion because there are a lot of things that impact this um, from politics to universities, um, so local politics, global politics, economics, finance, there are a lot of things that kind of intertwine into this and hiring practices in U.S. law. We're not going to get into that. Uh, I'm going to try to answer this suite into the point. Um, but the first question is, what has led to the shift away from Americans being admitted into top MFE programs? When talking to my old quantitative finance professor, uh, he talked about how our MFE program used to be a lot more American, uh, but that obviously isn't the case anymore. He chalked it up to the general distaste for the financial or finance following the 2008 crisis, which basically doesn't feel very rigorous to this individual, that description. <sighs> okay. I'm going to try not to rant too much here. Um, finance, financial engineering, quant finance, whatever. Uh, quantitative finance has been born out of traditional finance. So a bunch of people had this idea. Let's apply a lot of really heavy theoretical mathematics. Um, so I made this last video on, you know, undergrad topics that you should be taking and, you know, mathematics for undergrad. And people like, there were some comments like, Dimitri, this is like, you know, pure math, or this is applied math. This isn't a, you know, finance degree. Uh, and that's what I'm getting at here. Quant finance is not finance. Uh, it is applying the scientific method, which really hadn't been done in traditional finance very well. Um, but it's applying the math and stats to finance. Um, which is challenging because it's not a hard science, it's a soft science. And so as it's been born out of the ashes, traditional finance is booming in the United States, Americans. Uh, the reason for this is because the US has the best economy. Um, again, we embrace capitalism more so than other countries. We still have ridiculous things with socialism and things intertwined. We are definitely nowhere close to a pure capitalistic economy structure here. Uh, but that being said, because we are booming, because we embrace technology, because we embrace creativity, finance has been mainly focused in the United States. We are the powerhouse. Now, will we remain the powerhouse? I don't know. That's a whole other discussion here. Um, but because of that, I think we had more Americans focused in traditional finance to start. And as quant finance took off, again, uh, the interest in finance is going to be centered in the American pool here. And as it's kind of grown over time, uh, we're starting to bring in more math and stats and physics people into this picture of quant finance here. And so I think we've just seen diversification in that sense of it. Um, now, I don't necessarily agree with that. I don't think that quant finance masters are predominantly American at any point in time. I could be wrong. Um, but going back and looking at a lot of the people I've worked with who are in their 50s, um, all the way down to uh, those in their 20s, uh, it is disproportionately internationals. That's just how the quant finance industry is structured. Like, it, I think it's always how it's been structured. Now, the big names, the original people that kind of stemmed it out of traditional finance. Sure, we see an over concentration in Americans, but that's just because a lot of this theory uh, and field in itself was actually built here in America uh, because we actually have the economic system to build quant finance on. Now, if you go to other countries uh, where you have not as strict rules and regulations around you know, financial markets and how transactions are done, for example, so fair lending laws, uh, you're not going to have a robust quant finance industry because you don't have mathematical boundaries, essentially, like rules that have to be followed and processed and things that have to occur, uh, you have a higher rate of corruption um, and cartels and government shifts and political things that just like overthrow everything. And it changes how the dynamics work and it makes it unstable and it's hard to model these sorts of things. So that's why I think it started in America. I don't think it was ever predominantly American, but I could be wrong. Uh, question two is going to be, could you explain why it's desirable for MFE programs to have more diversity? especially with respect to more American students and students from underrepresented populations. Um, no, I don't think we should be setting quotas and trying to diversify for the sake of diversification here. Now, I think that's what a lot of programs are doing. So I've mentioned that. I am not a fan of that. Um, but 
in the last video, in the math video, like why math people don't know about quant finance, I touched on that we need more Americans in quant finance. That's what I said. And so then people are thinking like, what's going on here? How does this, how does this line up here? Um, what's happening is that we have found a really easy, lazy way of recruiting students for these quant finance masters. So what the universities are doing is they say, okay, I'm going to build a website. I'm going to add some finance classes. I'm going to add some math classes and I'm going to put it together and create a quant finance program. That's what everyone does when they start them. And then they bring in a bunch of Americans and they bring in a bunch of finance and business people, which are the Americans. And then they go out and they bring in a bunch of um, Chinese and Indians, for example, with all these other backgrounds. And of course, they don't really have finance backgrounds. They'll typically have heavier math backgrounds. And so you bring them in and then you churn them out and you train them and educate them. And magically, those that are <laughs> in the international realm are getting placed for jobs. And those that are American don't seem to be getting the quant finance jobs. So what the programs do is they go, okay, let's, let's figure this out. Um, what we're going to do now is we're just going to admit a bunch of international students with these base requirements. And so what we've seen from the employers of people like myself is that list of classes like calculus one and two, ODEs, PDEs, probability theory, statistics. Um, we're going to make that kind of the standard and everybody's going to have to have that to get in here. Well, that weeds out most of the Americans because the Americans applying to quant finance programs are the finance junkies that just want to do business. They're not actually math and stats people and they're not actual scientists. Um, and so what happens is you now have this, well, everyone applying now, everyone who's qualified, the Chinese, Indian, you know, we get a few of other things. We get a few Americans, a few Europeans, a few South Americans, a few Africans, you know, uh, maybe some Australia, whatever. Uh, but at the end of the day, what happens is now the perms have just gotten lazy and they just throw it up there and say, you know, this is the rules. This is what we want. Uh, we just want, you know, anyone who's qualified, please come here. Sounds like it's nice and competitive. It is not. Uh, the reason it's not competitive and the reason we have issues in the industry as a whole here, I'm only getting one type of candidate and one slice and sliver of the marketplace here. So if you look at this from a country perspective, uh, you have the US, you have India, you have China. Those are the three big kind of markets we'll talk about here. Again, you have South America and Africa and Europe, which I'll play a part of this. That's a whole other discussion. Um, and what happens is that we're only getting students that have been trained through a lot of the times these universities undergrads, so China and India's undergrads. And then we end up with a population of this, which is really only the wealthy Chinese for the most part. There are some poorer ones, uh, but you get the wealthier people from India and China that are coming over because their parents can afford to have them come over here and spend a bunch of money in a U.S. university. And so now what happens is instead of me getting the best top quality quant talent available, uh, we're biasing it because we're only going after the easy placements for the universities, which is let's just go to China and India, which have billions and billions of people. And so they have more applications coming from them and we'll just filter and pick off of that. Uh, so the US in general, the reason we're not seeing a lot of applications from the US as I touched upon in the math video is that most math students do not know quant finance exists. And when I say this, if you look at the last video in the comments, there are some people like, oh, we all know it exists. And then you find out it's like they go to top 10 math programs. Okay. There are hundreds of universities in the country, lots of them with many, many smaller universities with brilliant and bright minds uh, that are in mathematics. And then they graduate from, I don't know, let's say Washington State University where I did my undergrad and they have a math degree. And now what are they going to do with their math degree? They don't know. They're probably going to go teach. So they end up teaching like in high school or something or doing something frivolous. And it's like, it's not what they really want to do, but they don't know how to get to the, one of those bigger jobs. And of course, a lot of them then apply into tech. And of course, the tech industry is not hiring because, you know, they're not hiring from these small schools. And so we have a lot of untapped talent in the United States. that I think is just going by the wayside because we've done an absolute terrible job. The industry, myself included, uh, as well as the university system and the fact that we need to reach out and look at this top talent we have in the United States, which we're not recruiting. Now on a governmental piece on this, any public university is being financed and paid for by taxpayer dollars of American citizens. So it's kind of weird to say we're going to bring in a bunch of internationals and train them. And then a lot of times they go back to their home countries and yet a big portion of your bill, even though tuition is expensive, uh, is actually being financed by taxpayer dollars. So that's kind of the grind with the government. I think that's why some schools are starting to catch on that there's actually this big population of math, statistics, uh, and other sciences 
where you could actually go into quant finance and have the prerequisites, but we aren't going out there, at least most of them. There are a few programs I've been talking to that are trying to do this. We need to go out and not go to the finance programs where they're not qualified to join the quant finance masters. We need to go out to the universities and the math and stats departments. And more specifically, we need to go to the smaller schools where we're not being touched and targeted because there's going to be really smart people there and we're just going to overpass them and they're not going to get into these grad programs and they're not going to get into the pipelines for hiring. Now, you can apply the same logic here um, to Europe. You can apply it uh, to South America, to Africa. I don't know, wherever else you want to apply this to. Uh, we also have a sense that we are only pulling talent from really India and China. Now, that being said, one of the universities did tell me uh, they hire and bring in, they don't hire, they accept and bring in uh, students uh, into their program with finance degrees from China. But the reason for that is because they are required to take more math than Americans are required to take. So again, it's coming to a qualifications issue. It comes to the fact, I think, that programs just aren't marketing as well. And really we want to tap into other markets to broaden uh, the competition here. Now, I know a lot of people are gonna say, Demetri, it's so competitive though. Yes, because there are too many people in these programs who are not qualified. So when I interview 400 candidates and I narrow it down to like five people, we have a problem. Like we just don't have top talent coming from these countries being trained. And a lot of it's not the countries, it's they're coming to these I'm not going to get on my high horse here, but it come to these university programs that are not very good and they're teaching traditional finance and calling it quant finance. And then you get jobs uh, working in investment firms doing simpleton work of a finance major could do. And so that is one of the key issues here we have as well. So for those like me that are hiring, I need brilliant and bright minds and I can't find them. And so we have narrowed it down to two countries primarily. We need to broaden that and get out of that spectrum here. Now I know... One of the programs, I don't know which one, uh, they were had this weird connection with France and they're bringing in a bunch of French because France actually has a really good math um, curriculum and structure for undergraduate universities. Um, again, though, we need to find these pockets. We need to bring the best and the brightest to America. Um, but part of this too, which a little agitates me as a, a student, an American, someone that hires, if you don't want to work here long-term, don't come here, go home. Like it wastes our time our spots and slots for individuals who really want to come here, who want to become American citizens and fill out these roles. Um, the other piece of this as well, though, is that um, it's hard to define what is an American. So I'm going to touch on this a little bit here. Um, most Americans aren't nationally like born genetically or whatnot from America. They come from all over the world. So you can have someone like, I don't know, say Peter Carr, for example, right? Peter Carr is from Canada. He's born in Canada, but he came to the United States and became a U.S. citizen and worked, worked and taught uh, in the United States here. Now, do you count that as an American? I mean, again, if you're coming into these master's programs, my true intention on students and weeding them out, if you don't want to come here to be an American, don't come because it wastes a lot of taxpayers' dollars on the educational system. Uh, also on the hiring side, it's really frustrating. So for those of you that don't know, uh, you come here on a, on a visa, then you have to apply and you want to get your work visa afterwards. Then you go to a lotto and you take three different shots at getting accepted here. If you miss it, you go back. Uh, we have to pay lawyers that are experts on you know international law and hiring and recruiting. Um, I have to come up with a special paperwork to pay a bunch of money for your licensing and fees. Uh, I have to train you and create training programs. So part of the uh, rule in the United States is you're allowed to hire internationals if you can't be place them with Americans. So I have to prove that I couldn't find a good American to fit the position. And then I have to create a training program for you to show that you have all the prerequisites that the Americans didn't have, and then I have to train you. So again, it's a big problem. We need to tap into other markets. Now, if universities and schools are just trying to diversify because it's a trendy thing to do, which unfortunately I think many programs are doing this, I'm disappointed because we're going to hit on here in the next few questions. So third question is, if you were to admit these students, wouldn't that lower the rigor of the program? This is based on my personal experience. American students in my program are technically weaker in aspects such as math, stats, computer science background compared to international and Chinese Indian students. Um, and they thank me for the channel. Um, no, yes and no. So again, it depends how you go about diversifying here. If you're going to diversify because we want to tap into better top talent, and we're going to go out and do the actual legwork here as a university, and we're going to market this to math and stats and CS students, you'll get top talent. You'll get 
Americans that are vastly well-prepared, brilliant minds, uh, just as competitive as China and India in all respects, as well as everywhere else in the world. You have top talent here. We just are not recruiting it. We're not looking out there and grabbing it. Um, now, what they're touching on and what I've experienced this as well, uh, typically when they want to diversify, I'll put in air quotes here, they go out and they go, we need an American who wants to do this. How many Americans do we have to apply? Okay, let's set a quota and let in a few of them. And of course, these Americans have finance degrees. And the finance degrees aren't enough to do quant finance, as I can tell you, because I had a finance degree and I took a semester off and had to study to catch back up. And it was still a massive struggle. So I get it. There are issues and scenarios where many Americans seem unqualified. This is because you have finance people, business people who don't have the prerequisites to do it. And so because of that, um, now you have this weird mix. Now, if you were to go out there and do this the correct way, which is going into the math, stats, computer science departments and bring them in, I think the international students would find, wow, the Americans are actually up to par with everybody else. They're well qualified. Uh, they're going to do excellent in the program. Uh, however, the issue that I'm seeing is that many programs are trying to diversify by lightening the load or uh, other programs are MBA programs in disguise and they stamp on there an MFE logo or a quant finance logo and say it's a quant program and it's not. And they're accepting and bringing in all these business people. And then guess what? They teach business classes and they label some of them as derivative pricing, uh, stochastic calculus. And then they teach them at a really, really, really high level where you don't get into the nitty gritty details. And so now what ends up happening is you do. You have a massive chunk of Americans with quant finance degrees who aren't qualified to do the work. So I don't want to hire them and no one else wants to hire them. It's doing actual work. Um, so people hire them for manager positions at traditional finance funds. And those traditional finance funds label themselves as quant finance funds. And then those people in those MFE programs pat themselves on the back. They're a real quant. They work at a quant fund. Um, but yeah, it's, <laughs> I see it. I saw it as a student. Um, people in the industry as well, like when I start jobs, people just like, oh, it's an American. Demetrius American. He's not going to be good. And to be honest, I can't, I can't knock him because we do have this problem where we are letting in a lot of finance majors that are Americans into the programs to diversify. Um, and then we're bringing in qualified people from abroad. And of course, we're not on the same kind of tiers here. So we need to diversify and we need to go to the math programs, the undergrad programs. I would love to like do a, a cool tour and like talk to a bunch of these schools and programs. Um, but again, a lot of the smaller schools, a lot of the, of the math and stats programs in the United States and these smaller programs just aren't aware of the, the programs and the degrees. And then you just muddy the waters when you bring in all these businessy programs and business people. And the distaste is for the business side. It's not from the 2007, 2008 financial crisis. Um, it's, it's just like a math person doesn't want to do finance. I, I realized over the years, as I matured and grew, went through a career, I didn't want to do finance. I wanted to do uh, math and stats, which is why I went back and got a uh, quant finance master's to start with and then transitioned into applied economics and studied stats and math um, applied to economics and finance because I didn't want to do finance. I wanted to do math and stats. So anyways, those are my two cents. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. And as always, until next time.